All right, well, hello again. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome and thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us here tonight. Some of you may still be at the office finishing up your days. Others are taking time away from family and friends, uh, leisure activities. I'm Dr. Noel Ananthan. I've titled my presentation, Short-Term Ortho and Manual Osteoperforation, or Making a Good Thing Even Better. Now, I'd like to uh, let you all know you're in listen-only mode, so settle back in, uh, enjoy the presentation. You'll see that you do have a question box, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to type them in. I will be taking questions at the end of the presentation and we'll be glad to answer them for you. In the meantime, uh, jot down any notes that you have. If you do have a question that pops to mind through the course of the presentation, by all means, write them in right away when it's fresh in your mind. Now, I'm hoping that you will find our time together to be interesting, informative, and maybe a little bit inspirational as well. Now, a couple of, oh, I'm sorry, just one moment. A couple of quick disclosures here. I, I'm not employed by any dental company. Neither I nor, nor my family members own any stock securities or interest in any dental companies. And I have consulted or evaluated products for several companies and do on an ongoing basis, including Propel Orthodontics, Premier Dental, Culzer, E4D. I have been compensated in the past for consulting and evaluating products for our sponsor, Propel Orthodontics, and have received an honorarium for presenting this webinar. I do want to make clear to you though, that I only align myself with products, services, and companies that allow me to stay true to my goal and principles of delivering the best possible care that I can for my patients. It's a core part of who I am. And so I am honored to be affiliated, allied with the companies which, which I join on. Now, I know that I'm likely preaching to the choir. Most, if not all of you, are already offering orthodontic treatment in your service mix. However, it can be a very real challenge to make traditional comprehensive ortho efficient and profitable in our busy general practices. My focus is short-term orthodontics, specifically fixed short-term orthodontics. I define short-term ortho generally as cosmetically focused orthodontic treatment completed in nine months or less. Now, in my practice, I view orthodontic alignment as a foundation, a bedrock of delivering better dentistry for my patients. Well-aligned and leveled arches are simply a better starting point for all of our dental treatment, whether it's hygiene, perio, restorative, or a cosmetic. Jackie here is a perfect example. Jackie came to me well over a decade ago before I started introducing orthodontics into my practice. She told me, I want veneers on my teeth. I told Jackie, certainly, I see the benefit of veneers, both in terms of shape, form, proportion, as well as color of the teeth. However, I told Jackie that as a better starting point, if she had orthodontic treatment and had the teeth aligned and leveled, it would allow us to deliver simply better results. I sent her off to an orthodontist. She came back and she said, there's no way I'm having braces for two years. I thought maybe it's just a, a connection with uh, that particular orthodontist. Sent her off for another consultation with another orthodontist. She came back once again and said, no, I'm not having two years of braces. I want the veneers. Even at the preparation appointment, before I leaned Jackie back to anesthetizer, I swung my chair around, looked at her face to face, and I said, although we have the time set aside today, Jackie, there's nothing that I'd like better than if you said to me, I've changed my mind, I will have the orthodontic treatment as you suggested. Jackie laughed and she said, you know how I feel about that. I won't have the braces for two years. Well, we went ahead with the veneers. And as I said, they've been in service for well over a decade now. This was Jackie just recently at a hygiene appointment. There isn't an appointment that Jackie doesn't come in saying those veneers were the best thing that I've ever done. I just love the way my teeth look. But even on a cursory examination, you can see the compromises that I had to make. The fact that those upper centrals are poorly proportioned aesthetically. The gingival heights don't look ideal. From an occlusal view, we can see the thicknesses of the porcelain on those upper centrals, which represent a potential hygiene and long-term perio consideration. And keep in mind, Jackie's case was a fairly simple one. So a lot of compromises that had to be made here in terms of establishing the results that I truly wanted to. Now, what are the major objections to traditional comprehensive orthodontic treatment? Certainly the appearance of the braces 
is one, that lasting stereotype of metal train tracks. But usually, and more importantly, the one I find is treatment time. In this day and age, for better or for worse, faster is seen to be better. Generally, in our lives, when we want something faster, we pay more for it. And what is the one question that our ortho patients, fixed or removable, ask us repeatedly once treatment begins? When am I going to be finished? Or in my case, with the fixed ortho, when do these braces come off? Now, this is my patient expectation triangle. The services that we offer very often juggle the elements of good, fast, and cheap. The practicality is that we can only reasonably satisfy two out of the three. Now, I placed cheap in red because when we do focus on low cost, we risk degrading our services to a simple commoditized product. The time, effort, cost, and ongoing commitment that we have invested in being able to provide high quality care for our patients should be viewed as the unique professional services that they are. The reality that we face every day as hybridized healthcare professionals slash business people is a very challenging balancing act to say the least. Now, modern technology, knowledge and techniques allow us to address both objections to traditional ortho. Certainly the appearance aspect is well taken care of with aligners and aesthetic brackets and wires, and also the treatment time as well. My view is that the more tools that we can add to our tool belts to deliver better treatment results and very importantly, in a shorter time, the happier that our patients are, the more enjoyment that we derive from our careers, and the more profitable our practices become. And that, for me, is the perfect trifecta. Now, I want to be clear that the gold standard for my patients, as far as ortho is concerned, is comprehensive orthodontic treatment. Most will undertake a consultation with an orthodontist at my request and referral if they haven't already done so. However, if they decline comprehensive ortho treatment, part of my professional commitment to my patients is providing them with options and by doing so, help to make a positive difference in their lives. This is Azam, and he is a perfect example of that philosophy. He came to me 18 years old. He was leaving for university studies in Great Britain in about nine, nine and a half months time. And he had seen an orthodontist, was told that treatment would involve extracting four bicuspids and require over two years of time. And we can all certainly see that. We know what happens with orthodontic alignment. Obviously, that didn't fit into Azam's timetable. I asked Azam, what exactly is your concern? He parted his lips and he said to me, look at me, I look like an animal. And that was really heartbreaking to me. I thought to myself, here's a young man who's getting ready to start his adult life, interacting with professors, uh, teaching assistants, fellow university students, and then thinking beyond that, the start of his adult life in terms of job interviews, uh, romantic and social interactions. I wanted to give him an option. Through the use of my short-term ortho techniques and most importantly, manual osteo perforations, I was able to treat Azam in under nine months. It was eight and a half months from start to finish with no extractions whatsoever and truly and profoundly change his life. At the braces off appointment, when he took a look in the mirror after we finished, all he could keep repeating over and over was, wow, wow. Really heartwarming. As I mentioned, I'm Dr. Noel Ananthan. I graduated from the University of Toronto's Faculty of Dentistry way back in 1986. Now, I loved dentistry when I graduated. I love it even more now. This is me with one of my sons, Joshua, in front of my principal practice in beautiful downtown Streetsville, Ontario, Canada, which is just outside Toronto. Joshua graduated from my alma mater, the University of Toronto's Faculty of Dentistry back in 2016. He's in the second year of the master's graduate endodontic program at the University of British Columbia. Now, in addition to my practice, which I focus on comprehensive general and cosmetic dentistry, as well as fixed short-term orthodontic treatment. I also develop and teach continuing education courses. I create instructional and educational videos. I conduct in-office mentoring, and I provide case support services for dentists around the world who use fixed short-term orthodontic treatment. A busy schedule, to say the least, but one that I absolutely love. One of my most important and enjoyable current roles is as grandfather to Alexander, 
who's two and a half, I've just started to teach him how to skate, getting him ready to be a true dyed-in-the-wool Canadian hockey player. Now, if you would like to read more on my perspective of short-term ortho in the general dental practice and see more of my case studies, the just released January 2018 edition of Dental Town contains an article that I've written, and so please do take a look at that. Ortho is a discipline that combines the manipulation of space with the controlled application of forces. We also need to consider the patient's biophysiology and the all-important patient management. And this is where equipping ourselves with more effective tools in our tool belts is so beneficial for us and for our patients. A major and significant addition to my fixed short-term ortho arsenal has been manual osteoperforation. So what exactly is manual osteoperforation? When force is applied to a tooth, the tooth will move away from the force to dissipate potentially harmful effects. We control those forces in ortho treatment by way of brackets and wires or with aligners. Ortho movement consists of tissue breakdown and tissue formation, both of which are inflammatory processes. That inflammatory process is mediated by cytokines, which are simply chemical messengers. If we create controlled bone injury through manual osteoperforation, we will increase cytokine production, which will increase inflammation and the rate of bone remodeling. This decreases bone density, facilitating easier and faster movement of the teeth. In this image, if we apply force to the tooth in order to make it move from left to right, we will compress the periodontal ligament complex on the leading or right edge of the screen and stretch or create tension on the trailing or left side of the screen. The inflammatory response to the tension is cell proliferation in order to produce new tissue, filling the void that's been created by the breakdown of the tissues. Okay, here on the leading edge, the inflammatory response will result in breakdown of the bone by osteoclasts, clearing a path for the movement of the tooth. Now, one key concept that I teach for fixed short-term ortho is that lighter forces generally translate to more efficient movement. If we apply too heavy a force, we will actually cause vascular obstruction and necrosis or hyalinization, slowing or stopping the movement altogether. So pushing harder doesn't result in more effective movement. I'm not going to belabor or take you all the way back to dental school microbiology. However, here's a more detailed diagram to show you the process on a cellular level. We have bone breakdown or resorption, followed by bone formation. And the combination of the two allows controlled and safe movement leading to the alignment that we want to achieve. Gen dentistry generally benefits from a tremendous amount and depth of research and development. A lot of the supporting material for manual osteoperforation comes out of the great clinical research, research studies which have been conducted at New York universities and they're readily available for reading. Now there are three device options to create the perforations. A single use driver, a reusable handle with single use tips and a power driver. And I do use all three for my patients. As you'll see, the power driver is by far my favorite because it delivers the controlled force required, allowing me to focus on the orientation and depth of the perforations themselves. The process itself couldn't be easier. Step one is evaluation of the sites at which the perforations will be made. Now, I generally carry out the evaluation in advance as I'm assessing and treatment planning a case. And that consists of a quick visual inspection, palpation, and then radiographs as necessary to evaluate the root positions. It's gotten to the point now where with virtually every case that I treat, I'm already incorporating the thought of manual osteoperforation as part of the treatment itself. When the patient does arrive for their appointment, they're asked to rinse with chlorhexidine twice for a duration of one minute each. That reduces the bacterial count on the surface of the soft tissues. Then we place an optogate retractor, which I use for all of my fixed ortho patients. The optogate very effectively and completely retracts the lips and cheeks, giving me access for the orthodontic adjustment. And it also provides unrestricted access to make my perforations. Next, we anesthetize and make the manual osteoperforations. So the big question you may be asking right now, 
do the perforations hurt? And a natural question for both us and for our patients, penetrating through the gingiva will cause some potential discomfort. And so we do need to anesthetize. When I first started using manual osteoperforations, my concern was for my patients, their comfort, their well-being. So I very much er erred on the side of being overly cautious and used local anesthetic, usually Articate, Septimus, for virtually every single patient to ensure that they were profoundly anesthetized. However, with confidence, I've now greatly simplified my protocol by using a compounded topical anesthetic, which I have prepared by a local compounding pharmacy. You can see the recipe here, and the extra thick viscosity allows it to stay in place to be even more effective, providing me with full, profound anesthesia. Now, this is generally the depth of the perforations, which I typically make at various sites. Very simply, in the anterior segment, I perforate about three millimeters, while in the posterior segment, my perforations are a bit deeper, about five millimeters or so. I'm looking to penetrate through the alveolar cortical plate and just into cancellous bones. One of the great things is, as with any aspect of our dental treatment, as you use manual osteoperforation more and more routinely, you're going to get a feel for that penetration through the alveolar cortical plate. It's recommended that one to three perforations are made mesial and distal to the targeted teeth. The perforations can be made in a linear or triangular pattern. I personally generally prefer a linear pattern because for me, it's easier to stay between the roots with that linear pattern. You can also make the perforations on the buccal or lingual. For simplicity and ease, I'll always tend to make the perforations on the buccal. It's a little easier to visualize and it's much easier for me to access, particularly with the optogate in place. Now I do use lingual perforations if I have a tooth which is completely lingually blocked out or a, a palatally impacted canine. And I'll show you an example of that just a little bit later. The evidence shows that we have an approximate 10 millimeter radius of stimulation. That is, the inflammatory and stimulatory effects will occur up to 10 millimeters from the point at which we have made the perforations. Now that's an important piece of information and knowledge for me because it will affect the number of sites and actual number of perforations which I make. And that becomes part of my thinking process through the evaluation and planning for the manual osteoperforations. The perforators themselves are threaded drivers designed, engineered, and manufactured to easily create the perforations. They're rotated in a clockwise direction while applying gentle force forward and that allows the penetration through the cortical plate. With, with a single use device, the desired depth is set on the rotating white dial that you see, and an LED light will actually light up and indicate when you penetrate it to the desired depth, three, five, or seven millimeters. With a reusable handle, line markings on the retractable plastic sleeve indicate the depth. Now, the most common error that I see in those introducing manual osteoperforation into their orthoarmamentarium is not penetrating deeply enough. We tend to be a little bit gun shot. And again, that's perfectly normal and understandable. With comfort, with repeated use, you'll find that you are much more able to quickly and confidently make the perforations to the recommended depths. The only real downside of a too shallow perforation is not stimulating the inflammatory response as effectively as you could. Once the perforation has been made to proper depth, the driver is rotated counterclockwise to remove it. Through the entire process, the patient is absolutely comfortable and feels no pain whatsoever, as we'll see in videos, which I'll show you in just a few moments. So let's take a look at the perforation process itself. Here we see a labially displaced lower left canine with a lingually blocked out lower left lateral. The root apex of the canine is mesially positioned, which would prevent the desired labial movement of the lateral. Additionally, the canine has a big long root, so it's going to be resistant to move and very stubborn based on not only the morphology itself, but past experience. Now, this was a, a relatively early case in which I had just started using manual osteoperforations. And so I did use local infiltration with Articane. And I think you can see right here the penetration point for the anesthetic injection. 
good. I'm using the reusable handle and you can see the spring loaded clear retractable sleeve with the depth markings. Now I generally prefer to focus and limit my perforations to the band of attached gingival. This allows better control and generally less bleeding. And again, you'll see that in just a few moments. In this particular case though, with the shallow vestibule and the need to initiate the inflammatory response as close to the root apex as possible with this long rooted canine, I did need to perforate into the vestibular soft tissue. And you will see a little more bleeding here because of the vascularity. However, the perforations are nice and distinct and the bleeding stops very quickly. You can see that I made two perforations at each of the mesial and distal aspects of that lower left canine. This is where assessment, evaluation, and planning are so important in mapping out the perforation site. The more inferior perforations are positioned within 10 millimeters of the root apex, allowing me to effectively move the root distally to make room for the lateral. So we don't necessarily have to penetrate right where we visualize the root apex to be. We have that 10 millimeter radius of action. Here quickly are some perforations made with a single use device. And you can see that lower right sec or first bicuspid, again, mesial angularly tip the root in a distal position. And the LED will light up, as you see here, once I've perforated to the desired depth of five millimeters. Being in the posterior segment, I want to go a little bit deeper because the bone is a little bit thicker and we want to penetrate through that. Now, as I mentioned, the power driver is by far my favorite delivery method. It allows me to create the osteoperforations very quickly and easily. In fact, uh, previously, when I first started using manual osteoperforations, it was a process. I'd think about whether I was going to use it for a patient, propose it to the patient, work through the whole process itself. Now I keep the manual driver as well as perforating tips handy in the operatory so that I can pick it up and use it at any time. That's how important it is to my treatment at this stage. So let's watch a couple of videos in which I actually create the manual osteoperforations on an actual patient, Chris. We'll launch this. You can see the upper right central blocked out lingually, and it was actually completely in cross -bite. Here we're applying the formulated compounded topical anesthetic, and you can see I'm placing it very liberally. Chris has rinsed out with the chlorhexidine, two durations of one minute apiece. And once I've placed the topical, I'm going to use an explorer and hopefully you can appreciate I'm not being shy. I am poking nice and firmly to ensure that we have full soft tissue anesthesia. Okay? The compounded topical formulation is exceptionally effective. It will numb the soft tissues completely, providing with complete patient comfort. At this point, I'm simply just reiterating to Chris exactly what it is we're going to be doing with the perforations, allowing us to facilitate faster and more efficient movement of the teeth. Now that's especially important in a patient like Chris. You may be able to appreciate that I've placed bite guards on his molars to open the bite. We need to open the bite in order to allow that cross bite to clear. The more efficiently we can clear that cross bite, the faster we can remove those bite guards, return Chris to a normal eating pattern. So let's continue on with the actual perforations around that central for Chris. And you can see I have the power driver. I've already used radiographs to assess the root orientation. And so I've chosen my penetration points. As you see, normally I do like to stay in the attached gingiva. In Chris's case, I'm going to go up a little bit into the vestibule area. Okay. And two things I'd like you to notice. First of all, I am penetrating to a full three millimeters. So I've taken it in, reverse the direction of the power driver and remove the tip. We're going to go a little more apically. Again, I want that 10 millimeter radius of stimulation to allow effective movement of the entire root. Once again, we're going to penetrate to that three millimeters. And as I said, with more use, 
comes both feel and familiarity. So I can feel when I penetrated through the alveolar cortical plate, and I know that I penetrated sufficiently to stimulate the cytokine response. The second thing I'd like you to notice here is the fact that Chris isn't flinching in the least bit, and that's because he's in no pain, feels no discomfort whatsoever. So once more, the topical anesthetic is, a, is exceptionally effective. And as I said, it does make the whole process much more efficient. Uh, previously with the local injections, I'd place topical, allow that to take effect. Then I'd infiltrate with the local anesthetic, allow time for that to take effect. So using simply the compounded formulation of topical speeds up the process absolutely dramatically. And again, is a large part in my feeling that manual osteoperations are a routine part of any given orthodontic appointment. They don't have to be planned out laboriously. And you can see here the perforations have been made, a little bit of bleeding, which will be stopped and controlled very quickly. I, I normally like to use either a Q-tip or a cotton roll compressing the area just to stop the bleeding and then evacuate so that when the patient does rinse, from a visual standpoint, we're not going to have the bleeding showing up. Here's another series of photos showing a patient who was referred to me by an Invisalign provider because the case wasn't cracking well and treatment was dragging out far too long. The upper and lower incisors were proving to be a real challenge. You can see we've placed the topical very liberally. I'm going to use the Explorer and ensure that the patient is comfortable. Most of the perforations were focused in the anterior segment, but I did take them to the distal aspects of the canine just to allow finishing of rotation. And we all know whether it's fixed ortho or removable that finishing rotations on canines can be very stubborn. I'm going to penetrate through three millimeter depth of penetration in the anterior segment. As we move distal to the canines, it was about four to five millimeters that we took the Perforations. Now, uh, I believe Jerry is someone that's listening in on the webinar tonight, and he was mentioning that when he first saw the tips, they looked a little bit intimidating. They looked quite large, and certainly that can be the case as far as the initial appearance. However, they're very discreet, and once the perforations are made, they will close over within about two to three weeks' time. Patients have no issues or concerns with them. I've never had a patient that's come back and said to me, those holes are huge. That's not the case at all. Okay. And the use of manual osteoperforations for this particular patient was very dramatic because both the patient and the Invisalign provider reported back to me that they went from changing the aligners every one to two weeks to changing them every three to four days. So treatment was finished very, very quickly. Here is the power driver itself. You can see the various controls. So we have the start stop button, an LCD control screen, forward and reverse, the RPM indicator, the torque indicator. Normally we have the torque at about 25 Newton centimeters and the RPMs on high for this particular unit. One of the great things about this particular unit is the fact that it is contra-angled, just like our hand pieces. So very intuitive and comfortable to use, but also the head can be positioned in different orientations. And that is very beneficial to me because it allows an ergonomic directing of the perforator tip while still maintaining access to the control. Now there is some degree of invasiveness in making the perforations. So there may be some discomfort for the first 24 to 48 hours. Tylenol should be recommended if there is discomfort. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen should be avoided as they will suppress the inflammatory response that we're actually actively looking to create. I also suggest for my patients using warm salt water rinses. Those rinses will provide both a physical and psychological comfort to the patient. And as I mentioned, those perforation sites will close over in about two to three weeks. Now, I'm very old school using paper documentation. So I use this simple sheet to document where I've made the perforations. And it forms a great part of my medical legal record keeping. And this procedure checklist ensures that the entire team 
from administrative when first proposing or discussing manual osteoperforations to the front desk, right back to my chair side assistant are all on the same page to deliver a really smooth patient experience. Verbiage and patient scripting are, scripting are critical to not only case acceptance, but also ongoing patient perception of the care itself. And I'd like to share some of the scripting that we use in our practice for manual osteoperforation. Keep in mind that your entire team should be versed and rehearsed in the scripting because hearing the same message from different team members reinforces it in the patient's mind. First of all, how do we rationalize and justify manual osteoperforation and its additional fee? A couple of the scripts that we use, Propel works with the patient's own biology to stimulate bone release, to release stubborn tooth movements and accelerate treatment. By stimulating the bone, we can achieve a more ideal finish. Teeth are moved with more predictably, and most importantly, treatment can be completed in significantly less time. Another script we use, treatment often takes about six to nine months. That's for fixed short-term ortho in my practice. We have a premium treatment option that accelerates treatment, reducing treatment time by up to 50%. For this service, there is an additional $500 fee or an additional $20 per month if it's financed. If not, we'll still give a fantastic result. So again, just having everyone on the same page, being able to deliver the same message really hits home to the patient. Okay. In describing the procedure itself, few possible scripts, based on your type of case, we recommend adding Propel to stimulate the bone in allowing us to achieve a more ideal finish and in less time. That less time is the key part. We numb your gum tissue so there is no discomfort. The doctor creates a few tiny micro osteoperforations around specifically targeted teeth. These teeth are usually the most challenging to move and the teeth that require the most amount of movement. The doctor will be performing a quick treatment which will stimulate the bone to help that tooth respond better to treatment. Now, very often the patient will ask, so you're making holes in my gums and bone. And we don't shy away from that. We tell them, yes, they are perforations, they are holes, but they are absolutely safe. And uh, to show how conservative they are, we simply need topical anesthetic. We don't need to numb everything up. And that I find is a uh, perception changer for our patients as well. When they realize they don't need the needle, it really changes their view of the perforations themselves. Okay. In preparing the patients for specifically what to expect, uh, here are a couple of scripts that we use. We have an exciting technique in our office called Propel. The process is simple. We apply topical anesthetic to numb the area, then perform Propel, as you see here in the treatment guide, and I'll talk about the treatment guide in just a moment, to stimulate the bone around targeted teeth. This creates a biological response that will stimulate the bone to allow the teeth to move faster through it. And so treatment is shorter. It's a simple in-office treatment that takes just a few minutes. And afterwards, you go on with the rest of your day. Don't change your routine whatsoever. We're targeting a few specific teeth because the movements in these areas will determine the length of your treatment time. And again, I'll speak to that within my practice and my actual usage for my patients. By using Propel, we're completing these movements more efficiently to achieve a more ideal finish and in significantly less time. Propel Orthodontics is fantastic in providing incredible support, including patient literature. And you do want that handy and available for your patients. It allows the patients to rationalize manual osteoperforations with their right and left side brains. And your local representative will even be there by your side to help and guide you for your first patients. Uh, if the patient asks about discomfort or pain, you can let them know. There's no healing or downtime. Most patients don't feel anything after anesthesia wears off. At the most, they may feel some light sensitivity for about 24 hours. If so, Tylenol is the medication that we recommend, not non-steroidal anti-inflammatories as they can counteract the treatment effects. And again, I like to recommend rinsing with warm salt water three to four times a day to really help things out. Now we're constantly bombarded with new products and techniques. Why do you want to introduce and adopt manual osteoperforation into your practices for your orthodontic patients? Well, for your practice, you'll see increased treatment efficiency and that translates to faster treatment time. You'll see increased treatment effectiveness for better results. You'll see increased productivity through decreased chair time as well as the added fee for the manual osteoperforation. And then there's the 
benefit of the enhanced practice image, patients having the perception of the cutting edge techniques that you're incorporating into your practice for their benefit. For the patients, plain and simple, the big one is reduced treatment time. When the patients know that they can complete treatment in less time, it's the big seller and then better results as well. So where exactly does the rubber meet the road? How do I actively and actually use manual osteoperforations for my patients. Well, initially I limited it to stubborn movements, uh, as I've shown you with that lower left canine, that lower right first bicuspid and the upper right central in the videos for Chris. I now use it almost routinely at braces on, particularly through the anterior segment, the social six, to really accelerate alignment of the teeth, which has a profound impact on the patient's emotional perception of treatment, just the smiling from ear to ear as they see those movements occurring very quickly. And I'll show you some actual cases. I also use it at the three month point of treatment. The inflammatory response triggered by the manual osteoperforations will last about 10 to 12 weeks. So reactivation at three months boosts treatment and allows more efficient finishing. I charge $500 over and above my ortho fees, plain and simple. Typically, my short-term ortho fees start at $5,500. The manual osteoperforation is an additional $500. Many will choose to incorporate the fee, whether over and above their traditional ortho fees or as a reduction in the cost of the ortho treatment. I charge the additional fee because I see it as a high value addition and service to the patient. So let's take a look at several of my actual cases in which I've used manual osteoperforation, often as a real game changer in treatment. Here's Ashley. She was 18 years old when she came to me and she was awarded a field hockey scholarship in the US. She was scheduled to head down to training camp in about four and a half months time. Now, Ashley was a star player. So she knew that she'd be at the center of a lot of attention, newspaper photos, TVs, uh, TV interviews, videos, and so she really wanted a better smile. You can see from this pre-treatment photo, we're fighting a serious lateral open bite with a tongue thrust as well. I told her, let's get going at it. We put the braces on that appointment. We created the manual osteoperforations. In this case for Ashley, I, cre I created the perforations through her entire upper arch, started elastic use. Remember, four and a half months until she was to report for training camp. This was at the two month point and you can see those arches have leveled. Ashley was really good with her elastic compliance. And this was Ashley at four months, two weeks before she headed off for training camp. Just an incredible transformation. Now, one of the really neat things with any of our patients and something that makes dentistry so satisfying, uh, I, I always lecture, teach, mentor and tell that the most frustrating and the most rewarding aspect of dentistry is the fact that there are people actually connected to the teeth that we treat. Ashley was no exception. When she first started coming in to see us, she typically came in in her warm-up suit, hair pulled back in a ponytail. Partway through treatment, we could see the transformation that her perception of her smile and the self-confidence that it brought had brought about on Ashley because all of a sudden she started coming in dressed in very smart clothes with makeup on and her hair done. And that was a complete transformation in her personality. And quite truly, it was a, a thrill and an honor to have been a part of that transformation for her. Caitlin here is another challenging Invisalign patient who was referred to me by her dentist to complete the case with brackets and wires. She had been undergoing Invisalign treatment for over two years and certainly non-compliance was a contributing factor to the lack of success in a timely manner with Invisalign. Now, I knew that uprighting those mesoangularly canted centrals would be most challenging. So I focused the manual osteoperforations around them specifically at braces on. And you can see that I've made two perforations distal to each of those centrals. By week six, the centrals have been upright just beautifully, allowing me to focus on finishing alignment. And we finished her treatment in four months. Now, without the manual osteoperforation, treatment would have been about six months, which is still very palatable for most patients. But once again, the question that I receive, especially because I focus on fixed ortho with brackets and wires, is when can I get these darn braces off? Appointment in and appointment out. Uh, very often it's humorous because 
they'll ask my assistant, uh, hygienist or the receptionist, thinking, well, maybe they'll give me a shorter answer. Right? So again, it's a lot of fun. Shannon here presented wanting that snaggle tooth upper right central straightened out. I focus the use of manual osteoperation just around that central. However, that allowed me to upright the central, align the teeth, and actively open the bite. My normal treatment time estimate would have been, again, about six months' time for Shannon. The actual treatment time for Shannon with the manual osteoperations, just a really short three months. Did that fast and effective treatment have an impact on Shannon? It absolutely did. She has been a great referral source because she can't stop telling her friends, her family, her coworkers, any acquaintances, just how incredible the treatment was, including the manual osteoperforation. Now, Shelby is another great emotional case. Uh, she's easily a two-year comprehensive ortho case with four bicuspid extractions, and we can see that fairly routine. Her brother was brought in for impressions for a hockey mouth guard. Her mother asked me, would you take a look at my daughter, Shelby? She's been to an orthodontist, they told her, remove four teeth, over two years of treatment, and she said, no, she won't go to go ahead with it, but I'm at wit's end because Shelby is really affected by her smile. Her teachers tell me that she has no friends, she doesn't participate in class or group discussions at all, and I, I need to do something for her. Her mother brought Shelby in. We did a consultation. I told Shelby, Shelby, if you were my daughter, I would want you to have comprehensive orthodontics with the orthodontist. And uh, Shelby was shy. She didn't say a word. They went off. Her mother phoned me and said, for whatever reason, Shelby took a liking to you. She said, if you'll do the treatment, she'll go ahead with the work. Again, I could have stuck by the guns, by the principal, and, and said, you have to have treatment ideally. But that would have done a real disservice to this young woman if she had elected not to proceed with treatment. So we did proceed, put the brackets and wires on. I use perforations right across the upper and lower arch, right at the outset of treatment, as well as partway through treatment. Now, this was at about the seven week point. And one of the interesting aspects was that Shelby came in at this point and said, I'm happy with everything. Can we take the braces off? She was so pleased at even the incremental progress that was made that uh, she was willing to get the braces off. I told her, you're stuck with me. You need to go forward. So we continued using the brackets, round wires as well as gradual and staged interproximal reduction to give Shelby just a tremendous transformation in about nine months time. Typically it would have taken me well a little over a year without the manual osteoperforations, but we brought this about just beautifully. Sarah here is another case where unraveling the teeth would normally require up to nine months time, even with short-term ortho techniques. And you can see those lower incisors trapped behind the lower canines. They're a real challenge. I placed manual osteoperforations at braces on. And here we are currently, she's still in treatment right now, but just before month three, getting ready for the next perforations. Catherine highlights the value of manual osteoperforations in localized and more demanding situations. Again, we see the mesoangular lower canines trapping the lower incisors. Those incisors already exhibit a thin gingival biotype and recession. I focus the perforations around the lower canines for more efficient uprighting. And this reduced the amount of interproximal reduction required, as I'll show you a little bit later, to align the teeth and limited the impingement on the lower incisors on the fragile labial gingival alveolar complex. And certainly the bone loss shown in the periodical radiograph clearly illustrates why caution is so essential. And that bone loss was present prior to orthodontic treatment. As an aside, I use short-term ortho quite a bit to treat many periodontal patients referred by their periodontist. The ability to align the teeth effectively and safely and quickly is a tremendous benefit. It allows improved oral hygiene as well as stability. Now, here's another seemingly daunting case, Cindy. She had seen an orthodontist who recommended four bicuspid extractions and two years of treatment. However, Cindy had two personal defining criteria for her treatment, which is why she came to see me. She wanted no extractions, extractions and she had her wedding date set in just under one year. I was confident in you that my standard operating procedure for short-term ortho could complete treatment in about 12 months time. However, I also knew that with manual osteoperforations, 
I could easily have Cindy ready for her wedding day. So it was off to the races, manual osteoperations, osteoperations at braces on, again at month three and once more at month six, allowing me to transform Cindy's smile in nine months. Again, well shy of the 12 months that I would have budgeted in without the perforations and in time for her wedding to give her an even more memorable wedding day. It's the ability to make a difference in the lives of my patients, patients like Cindy, like Shelby, that makes dentistry so rewarding for me. Now, another very challenging scenario in short-term ortho, both fixed and removable, is aligning lingually blocked out upper laterals in any timeline whatsoever. Much of the movement in short-term ortho involves coronal tipping. So we see here that the crowns of the laterals have been tipped labially into arch alignment. However, the root apices remain palatally positioned, leaving a foreshortened appearance. I've now started using manual osteoperforations along with new techniques that I've developed to upright these blocked out laterals within six months time. Victoria here shows a blocked out upper left lateral. And notice the deficiency in the alveolar process caused by the palatal root position. And we can see the palatal prominence of the root form itself. Within about six weeks, the crown tips nicely labially. However, the root lags far behind. Manual osteoperforations supplement my new techniques to torque the root labially, and you can see that the alveolar root form process has filled in just beautifully. I've efficiently torqued the root labially in a short-term ortho timeline using light forces with small diameter round wires as opposed to rectangular wires. The old saw, you don't know what you don't know applies to so many elements of dentistry. Darren here is a really great example of that. He was seeing a dentist on a regular basis. The dentist took uh, the Invisalign course, came back to the practice at the hygiene examination. He told Darren, you know what, Darren, I'm excited. I want to start Invisalign treatment and I'll offer it to you for $1,800, the cost of the aligners themselves. Now, it was interesting because Darren said prior to being offered that Invisalign deal, he didn't think his teeth were crowded, but once it was mentioned, all he could do was look in the mirror and notice the crowding. Darren's an engineer, and so very methodical in everything that he does. And so he researched it all online, talked to friends, family, relatives, and he realized he didn't want Invisalign. He didn't think it would work properly or, or in the timeline that he was proposed. And so he sought me out, came for a consultation, and agreed to treatment right away. Now, why? was efficient treatment important for me for Darren. Specifically, Darren traveled almost two hours each way for his appointment. And so efficiency of treatment was especially critical to ensure that we were able to allow Darren management of the commuting time that he was doing. So we did carry out the treatment and we completed it in four months. We had the braces on and braces off appointments, three adjustments in between one course of manual osteoperforation at the braces on appointment. One of the other interesting side stories with uh, Darren was in the before photo, you can see that the upper right central is distoangularly canted. The mesial incisal edge has been differentially worn. I told Darren my preference was to upright the tooth and then whiten and restore his teeth. Darren said, I've had those front teeth bonded three times. The longest it ever lasted was a simple three weeks. So no thanks, I don't want to do it. Uh, I convinced him to go ahead with it. And so we completed the treatment, carried out the whitening, did the simple bonding, and created some protective overjet in the treatment. A little hard to see from this angle. The most gratifying part was Darren came to me at the end of treatment. And I want you to keep in mind that he was offered the Invisalign for $1,800. I charged him the $5,500 for the ortho treatment, as well as the $500 for the manual osteoperforation. So he paid over three times uh, the Invisalign offer, but he came to me just smiling from ear to ear and he said, this was worth every penny and I'm so glad you convinced me to do things the right way because I would have never been able to visualize such a great result. So part of our key role as healthcare providers is helping our patients to co-discover what is possible. Now, Jasnik is another potentially challenging case for both fixed or removable ortho, and we see the mesioangular cant of the upper centrals. They tend to be somewhat stubborn. 
okay, using manual osteo perforations at braces on around those centrals took the treatment time from a projected five to six months down to four months. Now, David here presented with the chief complaint of wanting a better bite because he knew that his lower second bicuspids had tipped mesially as a result of his first bicuspids having been extracted when he was a child. So wanting a better bite is very much not a typical short-term ortho chief complaint where we normally focus on aesthetic alignment of the teeth. However, I combined the efficiencies of fixed short-term ortho with manual osteoperforations to upright both of the lower bicuspids just beautifully, close the space, spaces, and finish alignment in 11 months rather than the 18 to 24 months quoted by the orthodontist. I'd like you to notice that a tooth which is tipped mesiodistally requires more arch space. So uprighting a tipped tooth in this manner actually creates space, reducing the amount of reprox or interproximal reduction required, delivering better dentistry. So the use of manual osteo osteoperforations uh, affords me the confidence to be able to do so. Here's Danielle. She's a young woman who came to see me for veneers because she was getting married in a year and a half. Now you can see the retained upper primary canines and the upper right permanent canine just peeking through. Her upper left canine was impacted palatally is this any type of starting point for veneers? Well, of course not. So I helped Danielle to co-discover the value of orthodontic treatment as well as the need for manual osteoperforation. Danielle readily agreed with the exposure of the impacted upper left canine and the orthodontic treatment. And because of that palatal expansion, I did use palatal perforations. I mentioned this is one of the only situations where I will use the palatal perforations. And we completed Danielle's treatment orthodontic and veneers in 12 months, well before her wedding date. So again, a dramatic transformation brought about by the efficiency of manual osteoperforation allowing me to expose that canine and bring it down just beautifully. Which is another great example of my core belief that well-aligned and leveled arches are the starting point for better dentistry and better dental health. He was referred to me because he lost the bridge from his upper left lateral through first bicuspid and he expected that I'd suggest a new bridge being made in place. Uh, it didn't take much for Rich to help be helped to co-discover the value of orthodontic treatment, uh, or sorry, of implants at the upper left canine and first bicuspid. What did take a lot more convincing was the value of orthodontic treatment to align his teeth, level the arches, and open up the bite. Again, I used manual osteoperforations at braces on to accelerate the leveling and the alignment of the upper arch to open up that deep bite and create the necessary vertical interarch clearance for the implants in the upper left canine and the first bicuspid, as well as for the restorations. Ortho treatment took four months. That was especially important for Rich. As I said, he took a lot of convincing regarding the orthodontic treatment. There wasn't an ortho appointment where he didn't come in, hold up his phone with a date six months from that braces on appointment. And he said to me, those braces or these braces better be off by that date. A lot of pressure. Uh, additionally, early on in ortho treatment, Rich was diagnosed with prostate cancer, and so he had a lot on the go. So I really wanted to get the braces or the ortho done as quickly as possible. We finished up in the four months, as I mentioned, and certainly it's not a perfect result, but it's a wonderful transformation nonetheless, both aesthetically and dentally. Sue's so another patient who came to me specifically wanting veneers. You can see that the gingival heights are poorly positioned aesthetically, and the destructive effects of the deep bite are clearly seen on the entire lower arch. So I helped Sue co-discover the value of short-term ortho, including the use of manual osteoperforations to make treatment time more efficient and more effective, which made it actually palatable for her. The manual osteoperforations at braces on allowed me to level the upper arch and finish alignment in under four months, creating a much better starting point for the veneers, which we're now getting ready to deliver. Okay, so let's deconstruct Sue as a clinical and business case study. My having the confidence of manual osteoperforations in my tool belt allowed me to confidently propose orthodontic treatment to Sue. My ortho fee was $5,500. Now, she was one of the rare exceptions for which I included the manual osteoperforations in that $5,500 simply because we had the fees for the veneers over and above the orthodontic treatment. So that confidence that I had 
impacts on the financial bottom line. Certainly, that is a benefit. But the ortho results set the stage for better veneers aesthetically, along with the protective overjet, which I've created for the porcelain work to follow. Okay. Quinn was concerned that her upper left second molar had tipped into the space left by the extracted first molar, and she wanted space opened up for a veneer. Now we can see that the space has closed completely. So treatment combined a spring-loaded band and loop retainer with thick short-term ortho. Because of the large root structure of the second molar, I placed perforations on both the buccal and palatal, mesial and distal of the second molar to facilitate the distal tipping and translation, as well as beautiful bone remodeling for the planned implant site. So treatment time start to finish was six and a half months, a little longer than my standard short-term ortho cases because of the lateral translation I needed for that second molar. And the leveling afforded by orthodontic treatment aided by manual osteoperforations allows us to create a brand new canvas for a restorative and cosmetic treatment rather than being constrained to the mutilated canvas with which we're usually presented. Imagine this patient, you've talked to him or her repeatedly about replacing those missing lower left, lower right teeth finally comes in and says, I'm ready to go ahead, whether it's uh, implants, bridge work, or a partial denture. Think about the compromise result you'd be forced to deliver here, whereas the confidence of using ortho aided by manual osteoperforations and the simple leveling has created the interarch vertical clearance that we need to properly restore the teeth and the use of the manual osteoperforations at the beginning of treatment make the time required for ortho treatment acceptable to the patient. Now, I don't place temporary anchorage devices, mini implants for my cases, but for those of you who do, the power driver is perfect for that as well, aids in intrusion of the teeth. The use of ortho with the added efficiency of manual osteoperforations can be applied in so many situations that we see day in and day out. Aileen was referred to me by her dentist. They'd already planned veneers in her upper arch. And the dentist wanted the space left by her congenitally missing lower right central closed. I helped Aileen co-discover the appeal of moving that lower right lateral mesially and developing the space to place an implant in the future. I treated just the lower arch and localize the manual osteoperforations mesial and distal to the lower right lateral. Normally the movement and space development would have required about five to six months. The manual osteoperforations allowed me to complete it in just over three months and the ortho didn't prevent proceeding with the veneers. Developing the space not only allowed for better aesthetics but also for better occlusion, maintaining anterior coupling. Now I incorporated what you see here as a direct composite provisional into the fixed retainer, allowing Aileen some time to save for the implant itself. That, that was something that she hadn't considered, hadn't budgeted for, and so this allows her a little more time. So great patient care starts with giving the patient the option for optimum dentistry, not constraining them to the narrow confines of what we or they see at the time being. So certainly Aileen's case was a win for Aileen, a win for me and a bonus win for the referring dentist with the addition of the upcoming implant and the crown to follow. So that concludes my presentation. Uh, this is my email address and you are welcome to email me with any questions that we have. Now I am going to open this up uh, and ask if there are any questions, by all means type them into the question box because I'll be glad to answer them for you. Uh, I know there's a lot of information that's being presented. And uh, one other thing that I would encourage you to do is if you are interested, intrigued in manual osteoperforation, as I said, it started out as somewhat of a standalone type of consideration for me. It's now become a routine part of my short-term ortho armamentarium and expanded to allow me to help Invisalign providers accelerate their treatment, uh, do look into it. Uh, PropelOrtho.com will provide you with wonderful information initially, videos, articles, uh, research information, 
frequently asked questions and if you do contact them they'll your territory manager will get in contact with you now i'm just going to uh expand this sorry just uh okay okay first of all do you perforate on the maxillary midline area and also would you perforate on a pregnant woman <clears throat> great questions so first of all in the maxillary midline area i do if i have attached gingiva uh, you saw in a couple of those cases the freedom impinging on the area in between the tooth uh, a very low freedom will tend to discourage me from perforating in the maxillary midline area whereas if i do have the attached gingiva then i will perforate uh, also, second part of the question, uh, would you place the perforations on pregnant women? Generally, no. So again, with any orthodontic treatment, I view it as elective treatment, which it is. And so for the most part, I'd rather err on the side of being overly cautious with a pregnant patient and not perforate for them. Great questions, though. Okay. Uh, next question is, can you display the formula for the topical once again, by all means. So let me bring this up. And again, I'm oh, sorry, it is available from Propel. So uh, again, the support is absolutely incredible. I'll bring that up for you though, in just one moment. The computer's just a little bit slow. Okay, here we go. Good, okay, so I'll, put that up on the screen and just leave that there for you. It may pop out as I switch to uh, different questions, but there is the formulation. It's important to uh, specify to the pharmacist, no substitutions. It's a very specific formulation that is very effective. Again, if you look up www.propel, P-R-O-P-E-L, ortho.com, it's a wealth of information, both immediately on the website as well as subsequently in terms of contact. Okay. Does it matter how deep the perforation is? Great question. Yes. So as I said, the recommended depths are three millimeters in the anterior segment, mesial of canine to mesial of canine, and five to seven millimeters in the posterior segments. The key element for me is perforating through the cortical plate in order to get into the cancellous bone. Once I have, I know that I'm going to stimulate a very active inflammatory response, trigger off the cytokines. If we don't penetrate through that cortical plate, we're not going to make use of the vascularity of the cancellous bone to trigger off the inflammatory response. That question, Jerry, I'll touch base with you. Um, I'm going to uh, speak to you directly and give you some guidance and tips uh, based on my practice to allow you to really get the propel going. I know you have the power driver. You will enjoy it. I'll guide you through that very well. Okay. Have I incorporated VPRO5 into your protocol? So the short answer is no. Uh, again, with fixed short-term ortho, I tend to stay with everything that I can control within the practice itself. Uh, as my my team and I think my wife and children will tell you, I'm a control freak. So I like the fact that I can carry out, execute what's needed to allow treatment to progress smoothly. I know many who have incorporated it though and have found it to be very effective. A couple of the orthodontists in my area are using it to great effect. And so it's another great potential tool that you can add to your tool belt to make ortho even more effective. Okay, I see that we have come up on nine. Now, one of the major complaints that most uh, have with my webinars is I run way over time. I think we've hit nine o'clock just about dead on. Again, I do want to thank each and every one of you for having taken time out of your so busy schedules to be with us tonight. My challenge to each of you is to look to be a little bit better tomorrow. I hope I provided you with the inspiration to seek out manual osteoperforation to be a little bit better in your orthodontic treatment for your patients starting tomorrow and make a difference for your patients, not just in terms of nicer smiles, but also the impact that it has on their lives. Thank you all very much, actually. I'm just going to go back. And again, uh, the two resources I'd like to give you, first of all, is www.propel ortho.com and if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask me uh, please do feel free to email me 
Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll look forward to speaking with you soon. Bye now.